procedure do you follow to resolve a dispute with a researcher or an institution in case of an ethical misconduct? So in case of ethical misconduct, if we actually find that something has been intentionally done, uh, we will inform all authors about the problem uh, and consider uh, often whether the paper should either be rejected or retracted. Um, and that's one line. One is we need to make sure the literature does not um, is clean from all these errors. Um, and then the second portion is to whether determine whether the institution should be informed, because sometimes there may be um, misconduct in one article, but you don't know if there's misconduct in other um, contributions from this group. And so it's important to consider whether the institution should take a look um, as well. Uh, in cases of authorship dispute, which are not considered misconduct, um, it's hard for a journal to determine whether uh, who should be an author and whether the first author should be the second author and not the first um, in cases, things like that. So we also inform the institution and ask them to mediate um, the dispute because really we are not in a position to, um, to, to make those decisions. And, but we don't want to publish a paper where someone is being denied um, their appropriate role within the authorship list. In your experience, have you noticed a higher incidence of ethical misconduct uh, from non-native English-speaking authors versus English-speaking authors? You know, I don't think we have. Um, in general, uh, we have as, just as many cases. I think each year we check to see um, whether they're basically U.S.-centered versus non-U.S.-centered. Um, and we have about a 50%, um, give or take a few percentage points every year, where half of our issues come from outside of the U.S. and half of our issues come from inside. Um, in terms of each paper, there's so many authors that um, we don't differentiate whether the first author or the last author is a native speaker um, or not. So, but I don't think that ethics issues are um, limited or specific to one group of people. Absolutely. I think that's the bias towards foreign authors or uh, non-native English speaking authors and it's good to clarify that. Right. And I think, you know, every journal has a set of standards um, and so every time an author goes to submit a paper, they have to follow the guidelines that each journal, um, that the, to the journal that they're submitting it to. Um, and so, you know, errors can happen at any time and ideally they're errors due to lack of knowledge and not due to intent to deceive somebody. Um, so for every incident, we try to make sure there's an education component about what the policy is and why it might not have been adhered to appropriately, and then try to find a way to address it. Um, the cases that are rare, ideally, <laughs> for the most part, um, are um, when people do something intentionally. And in that case, it doesn't matter what country you come from, it's an intentional act.